From north to south, east to west, we're going to explore the art. The art full of wonders and mysteries. Welcome to Finding Art. Cancer is a type of disease where cells grow out of control, divide and invade other tissues. With cancer, the normal process of cell division goes out of control. Cells change their nature because mutations have occurred in their genes. All the daughter cells of cancer cells are also cancerous. Let us get to know about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer symptoms. When present, common symptoms of cervical cancer may include vaginal bleeding. This includes bleeding between periods after sexual intercourse or postmenopausal bleeding, unusual vaginal discharge, a watery, pink, or foul smelling discharge is common, pelvic pain, pain during intercourse or at other times may be a sign of abnormal changes to the cervix or less serious condition. Signs of advanced stages of cervical cancer Weight loss, fatigue, back pain caused by swelling in your kidneys, leg pain or swelling, leakage of urine or feces from the vagina, bone fractures, constipation, blood in your urine or hematuria, loss of bladder control, urinary incontinence, bone pain, loss of appetite. Causes of cervical cancer Human papillomavirus HPV infection. Long-term infection with high-risk strains of HPV can lead to the development of cervical dysplasia and cancer. Family history of cervical cancer. Women with a family history of cervical cancer, especially an affected mother or sister, have a two-fold risk of developing cervical cancer. Age. Very few women under the age of 20 are diagnosed with cervical cancer and more than half of those diagnosed are between the ages of 35 and 55. Sexual and Reproductive History Epidemiological studies have shown an increased risk for invasive cervical cancer attributable to sexual and reproductive behavior. Increased numbers of sexual partners and lower age at first sexual act have both been associated with increased risk. Smoking Current smoking is a risk factor for the development of cervical cancer due to the ability of carcinogens in cigarette smoke to cause mutation in DNA. HIV infection Women infected with HIV have been shown to have a five-fold risk of developing cervical cancer because of poor immune system. Long-term use of oral contraceptives is also responsible for cervical cancer. Diagnosis Colposcopy The doctor may do a colposcopy to check the cervix for abnormal areas. A special instrument called a colposcope is used. The colposcope gives the doctor a lighted magnified view of the tissues of the vagina and the cervix and it is not painful. It can be done in the doctor's office and has no side effects. Biopsy A biopsy is the removal of a small amount of tissue for examination under a microscope. A biopsy can make a definite diagnosis. The sample removed during the biopsy is analyzed by a pathologist. There are several types of biopsies. Pelvic examination The specialist may re-examine the pelvic area while the patient is under anesthetic to see if the cancer has spread to any organs near the cervix including the uterus, vagina, bladder or rectum. Computed Tomography CT or CAT Scan A CT scan creates a three-dimensional picture of the inside of the body with an X-ray machine. A computer then combines these images into a detailed cross-sectional view that shows any abnormalities or tumors. A CT scan can also be used to measure the tumor size. Magnetic Resonance Imaging MRI An MRI uses magnetic fields, not X-rays, to produce detailed images of the body. MRI can also be used to measure the tumor size. A special dye called a contrast medium is given before the scan to create a clearer picture. This dye can be injected into a patient's vein or given as a pill to swallow. Positron Emission Tomography Positron emission tomography PET scans uses glucose that contains a radioactive atom. Cancer cells in the body absorb large amounts of the radioactive sugar and a special camera can detect the radioactivity. These tests can help see if the cancer has spread to lymph nodes. Cystoscopy 
This procedure allows the doctor to view the inside of the bladder and urethra within a thin, lighted, flexible tube called a cystoscope. A cystoscopy is used to determine whether cancer has spread to the bladder. Proctoscopy this procedure allows the doctor to see the colon and rectum within a thin, lighted, flexible tube called a sigmoidoscope. The person may be sedated as the tube is inserted in the rectum. A proctoscopy is used to see if cancer has spread to the rectum. Laparoscopy this procedure allows the doctor to see the abdominal area within a thin, lighted, flexible tube called a laparoscope. The person may be sedated as the tube is inserted through an incision in the body. Thanks for watching. This is your host, Tracy Gomez. Please subscribe. See you in my next video.